Hi everyone, this is Adam Virgil, and in this video we're going to build out our testing database. And what I mean by testing is I mean physical and physiological parameters that we collect on a routine basis, but not every day and certainly not multiple times a day. These are things we might collect once a week, once every two weeks, once a month, periodically. Things like counter movement jump height, sprint times, maybe one repetition maximums, and some other things that we would like to visualize alongside other data sets. And this is an extremely important video because we're going to go over collecting different parameters that really don't have much to do with the testing metrics themselves, but things that you will want to collect so that you can aggregate and perform calculations on the data that you have in a way that is meaningful to you. And you'll see what I mean as we go through this video. And the first thing that we need is we need a key that corresponds with our player profiles. Oop, with our player profiles. We need something that ties this profile information in with the testing data. And for us, that is a name. And remember what I said in the profile video. This is not a great way to do this. It's a practical way to do it, assuming that you don't have two people with the same name. But what you might decide to do is you might to create, decide to create another field that is name plus date of birth to uniquely identify each athlete. Or you might assign each athlete a unique identifier. In any case, there needs to be something unique in this profile list that you can use to tie in to the athlete's testing data so that when we select an athlete with their name the testing data comes along for the ride just like their profile data does so to start we know that we need name as one of our columns here and now the rest we can kind of figure out what we want to collect looking through the lens of what other information do we need to aggregate it in the way that we want. So I'm going to snap out of this. I'm going to come back with a bunch of stuff on this page, and we're going to go through the metrics that I chose and why I chose them. All right, I'm back. Here's our data. We're going to go through this one column at a time, and I'm going to explain each column. The first is the name. Like we said, this should be something unique um, that will allow us to tie in whatever data is in this row of this name to a name that we have in our player profile. The second item that we have is date. You should always have a date associated with something that will change or could change over time. In our player profile, I would keep going there, we have positions. We're assuming that the positions do not change over time. We're assuming that their shooting side does not change over time, nor does their date of birth or their image. Their current team does, but that's there for a different reason. Their current age does, but that's dynamic based on their date of birth. And their current jersey number does, but again, it's kind of based on a different situation because we don't need to use the jersey number to aggregate information in our testing data in a different way. What I mean by that is we don't need to look at the average counter movement jump height for everyone that wore the number 13 for a given period of time, for example. So we have a date. That's really important. The next thing is position. And because we have our position in our player profile area, there's no need in entering in this data manually for every date. We can pull it in automatically, assuming that it's constant across dates, like we talked about. And now we have team. Now why is team in here? It's in our player profile. Well, the reason why team is in here is because someone's team might change over time. And this might not be a team. This might be sport. For example, maybe in the winter you're a basketball athlete, and in the spring you are a soccer athlete. Therefore, your team or your sport will change over time. From a team perspective, let's say it is a team, maybe you're an organization with multiple layers of teams. You have a professional team, you have a minor league affiliate or multiple minor league affiliates, and players move up and down. The reason why we need this is because let's say that we want to know the average heart rate for the soccer team 
on a given day? Well, to calculate that average, we need the team that each person is on on that date. And if you just have someone, let's say in their profile, they're on the football team because they play football and soccer, then all of the calculations for their heart rate will be for a football team and not for a soccer team. So we need to distinguish the team that a person's on on any given date so that we can make sure that the calculations on each date are accurate for that team or for that position or the team position combination, etc. That's why we are collecting these variables. The next thing that we're collecting is season phase. And the reason why we're collecting season phase is because now that we have a season phase, we could segregate. I just want to look at all of the testing that occurs in training camps so we can see year to year changes through training camp. Or maybe you just want to see everything that occurs in season. Or whatever the case may be, we have a season phase so that we can distinguish those two time periods and evaluate them either together or independently. And the same thing for training phase. We have training phase, which may be for each player. Each player, based on your program design, might be in a different phase at a different time. And you might be able to see changes in testing variables over time based on phases that a person is in or phases that a group of people are in. The next column that we have is season. And this is just a year. And the reason why we could calculate the year from the date, which is relatively easy calculation, but season is here because sometimes seasons cross years. If you were to just calculate the year of a date, you might get 2019 for October. And then when January comes into play, it becomes 2020. When in actuality, those two years are part of the same season. So if you want to look at season to season changes or averages uh, within a given season, in sport combination or whatever it may be, the season needs to be there. And before I go on any further, I just want to mention that each of these variables, we're collecting these on a daily basis for each athlete. That is not necessary, but it's also a little bit beyond the scope of what we're doing here because I want to make this as simple and practical as possible. You could have a couple of other tables, just like we have our profile table, we could have start date and end dates for each season phase and for each season and for each training phase and even for someone's presence on a team or a transaction uh, table where we know when players move from team to team or sport to sport. But those are kind of beyond the scope of what we're doing here. We're just collecting this stuff on a daily basis because in a lot of contexts, it's an easier thing for the practitioner to do than to set up and manage all of these different smaller tables, which would require less manual entry. Because if we had those tables, you would not have to manually enter in this information. It would just come from the data that you entered into the tables. Imagine we know that season 2019 is between 10, 17, 2019 and 1, 5, 2020. Then we could create a calculation to auto populate the season um, between those two dates for a given team, whatever it may be. The next thing that we have is event ID. This will be a calculation uh, combining the season phase and the season, which will allow us pretty much in drop down menus and such to select a specific event that we're interested in that makes sense to us and not going by date. Because if you just select a date, you might not remember whether it's a training camp or in season date or whatever your training phase or season phases are. So we create an event ID to make it ID to make it easy on ourselves. And now we'll get into our metrics. You may have completely different metrics. I'm just going through mine. The numbers are completely randomized. The metrics are somewhat random as well. But we have we have a counter movement jump that we do. And we have three trials of that jump. What we're seeing here, all the stuff that's filled in in this entire sheet is all data entry. These are things that we enter in manually. Everything that's blank can be a calculation. So we don't manually type in the average counter movement jump height from these three trials in this case. We type in the actual values for each trial and then we can calculate the average from that so that we don't lose any data. 
the other stuff here, we have a broad jump, which is just done once, a 10 meter sprint done once, a 20 meter sprint done once, body weight, body fat, VO2 max, use your imagination. And actually these aren't, I think originally this was a beep test number. I changed it to VO2 max, just pretend it's VO2 max. Then we have uh, a load for an exercise, the number of reps performed for that exercise, a load for that exercise, a number of reps for that exercise. And you could have as many of these variables as you want, as many of the things you need to enter. And then we have some other calculations that we do. For example, one RM for the exercise, because in this case, we performed a load for five reps. Maybe we want to estimate the one RM from that. And there are equations that we can use there. In the next video, we'll perform calculations on this data set. And there are a bunch of other metrics that you can add. But again, the concept being, here's our database, here are the things that we enter in manually, and we're going to be able to use all this information to visualize what we want to visualize in the way that we want to visualize it. You may not have a complete harness on what you need to collect right now, and hopefully me providing examples will give you ideas for what you might want to filter by or use in a visualization to change the way things look. For example, the way that I like to talk about this is envision yourself using a dashboard of sorts or wanting to look at a certain piece of information. For example, if you want to get the position average for counter movement jumps, you need to know each person's position to calculate that average on that metric. So the position has to be in here. If you want to calculate a team average, again, the team has to be in here. Similarly, if you wanted to pick a team and see all of the players for that team on the date that you select show up on a visualization, you'll need the team or you'll need the team that each player is on on that date to be there so that it brings back the right list of players. So hopefully these examples are helpful. What we're just going to do quickly is we're going to add more columns here to the end. I'm, I'm going to add a bunch of columns so that we can we can make room for other calculations and other metrics that you have. I should mention that all of this stuff, um, this database, it'll be available to you. Uh, you can just do download it or, or, or whatever uh, you want to do, make a copy of it so that you have something to work with and you don't have to design it all yourself since you're kind of watching me do it anyways. And you can enter in the metrics that you have and perform the calculations that you need and I'll have spots for you to do all of those all of those things. The last thing that I want to do here is I'm just going to select column one, bold it, and we'll make the background that dark gray that we did for our player profiles, make the font white. And you've already done this before. If you did the player profiles, which you need to do for this to work. So we'll also go to format when we have one of our cells selected and go to alternating colors and we'll choose our range. We want the colors to go from cell A2 to cell, let's just say CL. So we'll go all the way down the list, all the way through our design. And let's exclude headers from that and click done. And now we'll have alternating colors throughout this entire sheet. Last thing that I'm gonna do is, or the last two things, is I'm going to change the font to that Pharrell around like I've done before. And let's make this row bigger. And we will vertically align, just center align because it's easier, and format, and we will wrap the text so that there's no overflow. And now let's do what we did before. Let's select column one and go to data, create a filter, so that if we need to, we can sort and filter this information. And one example I'm just thinking of now is, you know how we said with the team, it could be a sport? With season phase, depending on your on your environment, it could be a, you know, a fall, spring, winter, summer, whatever, whatever the phase is. And then maybe you select, you just want to see an athlete's performance or a comparative performance dashboard for the fall for a certain sport or whatever the semester is. So I'm just trying to think and give you ideas for how these different variables can work for you in your context, because I don't know where each of you are right now. Before you leave, 
make sure that you give this video a like if you enjoyed the content, and subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified of videos right when they're released. Both of those things let the YouTube algorithms know that this content is somewhat valuable for at least a couple of people. So if you could do those things, I'd really appreciate it. Now, I'd like you to leave a comment below with the metrics that you tend to collect for testing and monitoring on a semi-frequent basis, and for what teams or what sports you collect those and use those metrics for. Again, so that we can all learn from one another and get ideas and help each other out in this community. If you got something out of this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. And I can't wait to see you in the next video. But before you go, I need to tell you something, and it's important. In the description of this video, I'm going to have this sort of template that you can just click and download or make a copy of if you want. And in the next few videos, we're going to go over some calculations and we're going to go over scoring, fitness tests, and things like that. I'll also have templates available with those calculations embedded. So if you want to work through this together and have your own metrics in here, you might want to download this template. If you want to wait until we figure out all the calculations, then you can get the next one. But I would recommend putting your own metrics in here right now and just watching the videos and you'll understand exactly what to do as we go through the rest of them and you may need to update your your template and that'll be fine you can just copy and paste all your data into that new template but the key is you need to get your data in here because you don't want to make that the last thing you want to as we go through the visualizations you want to make sure that you're working with your data so that you understand what you need to do and where you pivot from what I'm doing, things like that. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.